Today, we are here in Garden Grove with Jezere and Nathan. Yes. So how old are you guys? Um, I just turned 24 on May 26. Yeah, I'm 27. Seven. Are you guys originally from Garden Grove? Uh, no. I'm from Huntington Beach. I'm from Long Beach. Yeah. Long Beach? Yeah. We probably started dating about two years ago. And I started seeing her in Huntington. Yeah. Well, we, we come here. Um, We've been here about, about a couple months. Yeah. We'll, we'll come here and we'll stay here for like a few months a year. Uh, yeah. yeah. This is probably our second time staying on our ground. Hey, we don't get messed with by cops more, as much here. So that's kind of like what keeps us here longer. That's good. <laughs> yeah. And what's your current living situation? Um, both homeless. We're both homeless. Um, I'd probably say I'm more homeless by choice. Um, I, I don't like being home and using drugs at home and what it does to, to my family. Obviously not being home sucks too, but um, yeah. So I, I've been running away from home since I was 15, first tried meth at 13. And so it's been pretty much my whole life, you know, all through like grade school, high school, on and off, you know, not coming home for the first three days and weeks. And, you know, now months. So it started with meth. What are you using today? Um, I, I use fentanyl too now. And I was a basically I went to college after high school. Um, it was kind of like my my safe haven, my my rehab. It was a Bible college in Colorado. And then COVID hit, and I lost my job. Um, they laid off like six or seven or eight people, and I couldn't afford school anymore. And so my mom, she she had moved with me. And so um, she told me, like, we're going to have to go back to California. And then uh, that's when I got hooked on fentanyl. And every time I would visit in college, visit uh, Huntington Beach or Orange County in general, I'd always relapse on drugs. So uh, it was like my, you know, my dark place. I've never stayed sober here. Yeah. So it's the environment? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't blame it on the environment. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, it's not a good environment for me, personally. Yeah. Did you graduate from high school, Nathan? I did. I graduated from Paramount High School uh, in 2013. And I was doing good for a while, so I was like 21, and the habit pretty much took over, and I lost my job. And from right about then, I've been moving job to job, and then pretty much just kept getting worse. And until like here now. Yeah. Yeah, we were staying in my car. Um, for like the very beginning of our relationship, living in my car, staying at like Home Depot parking lots, Walmart parking lots. Um, and he was getting EDD and I was working part time making playhouses. So yeah, we uh, we'd probably get motel like half the week. But things just kind of escalate and get worse, progressively worse. Usually when you're on the streets, it's it's not like you you build up and now you have a house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, you know, <laughs> must be dangerous out here. It, yeah, uh, here definitely way more dangerous than Huntington Beach. Like, yeah. I, I I don't like staying out here. Honestly, the only reason that we'll we prolong our stay here, and specifically in Garden Grove, um, is because there's more drugs out here. And there's like the homeless. I would say since last time we stayed out here, I think the last time we stayed out here was probably like what a year ago, a year ago? <laughs> over a year ago. The, the homeless population has multiplied like by least three times wow. and way more like and um the cops that have stopped us recently they, they let us go you know because we're respectful they, they've told us that you know they're they're um they're told that they have to start like initiating every single rule and they're trying to push everybody out um yeah. we've got lucky they've always you know never searched us or anything just you know we just talk with them and, and ask them questions and and so they said it's probably a good idea if we go back to Huntington Beach. Yeah. <laughs> What's the most dangerous thing that you've seen out here? Oh, man. I'd probably say... Probably well, the like cops for last week. They were here at Garden Grove Inn and uh, so they had their guns pulled out. Yeah, six cops. It's They had six shotguns pulled out on a uh, couple someone, rooms here. Yeah, because someone had, was using a pistol the other night. Yeah, I pulled it out on somebody, and um, there's rumors that someone got murdered. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think anyone actually died. But yeah, and there's a lot of robberies, and uh, 
and a, a lot of uh, I noticed for me like I'm always with him when I'm around her because I get stopped if I'm by myself for just like 10 minutes I get stopped by at least five or six people trying to get me in the car like and and you know like I don't know if I'm gonna get sex trafficked or going there I never go in I just <laughs> you know but that's also scary because that doesn't really happen to me much where I'm from you know Huntington Beach so so yeah <laughs> we make sure we stick together what's the most dangerous thing that has happened to you um probably going boosting by myself and leaving her with the dealer or something they pretty much want me to be left alone with her so they can have some presents to like she'll do sex for money and shit of course she always says no and then they get upset and me boosting all the stuff goes to waves and, and they don't want it no more and like they stole everything we have yeah, I literally stole everything we have. Well, since we've been here, we've been here, what, two months now? Um, and yeah. Everything that we've ever owned got stolen from us at least, what, like... Two or three times. Which is, of course, not much, but, you know, to us, it's like... Ooh. It's hard to keep her starting. You don't yeah. have a blanket at night <laughs> and stuff, that stuff's important. Yeah. But I would say for me as a woman, the most dangerous thing that's happen happened to me, yeah, it's usually, like, it has to do with, you know, being alone with men in sexual situations. Like, I've definitely had, like... I've definitely been been raped and had sexual abuse happen to me. And you know, when you're on drugs, it's like that's like it's honestly just kind of normal. You know, it's it, when I go to treatment because I do. I've been to three different rehabs. I actually just for for the first time finished uh, a treatment center. I was there for five months, and uh, so yeah, it's, it it really hurts me that this is probably the longest I haven't been home. Um, probably about like three months since I graduated. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. Well, at least I can do it, yeah. <laughs> How long were you clean before you relapsed? Uh, That's crazy. No, no, no. She means when I got out. Two uh, days. Two days? It lasted two days. But I was in the program for five months. It was like a girls' program um, in Chibuco Canyon. But, um, so that's great. So you were clean for five months, then you got out, and after two days, you... Yeah, and, and you know, a lot of it had to do with, like, uh, he... He has people, I'm not going to name names or say who they are, but he, he has people um, who live in his household who use, and I got picked up by them. You know, he was there, and we, so we stayed sober for a day, and we had fun, we laughed, and we, I mean, I had so many belly laughs that day, like, it was such a great time, but then once I got around the people who do drugs, you know, um, no matter who they are, then that's when the thoughts, like, creep in. And, mm -hmm. and then this is what it led to, it was just like, oh, we're just going to do it a couple times, no big deal, and then... We got what we got robbed for all of our stuff, and then turn, and then we end up in this city, three cities later. Yeah. See, see, see. <laughs> Prior to the boosting, have you guys ever worked a nine to five? Um, yeah, I've worked two jobs in in retail, um, but both of them I just stopped showing up. Um, something would happen. I wasn't dating him at my first job, which I think was at Ross in Fountain Valley. I was dating somebody else, but you know, just something would happen where like getting drugs or getting high was more important. And, and then I would, I have a lot of anxiety and guilt and shame, so I'd be too scared to call, wouldn't want to show my face and just stop coming. Yeah. How about you, Nathan? Yeah, um, for the last five years, I've probably had like three, four jobs. I've worked at AutoZone, uh, Auto there was a different tow company, I can't remember their name, and one other job, oh yeah, construction, other than other than construction, and my buddy pulled me in, and I did that for about a year, and that's what led me to doing my own business for a little while, to play playhouses and stuff, and that's about it. Do you guys have any children? No. no. <laughs> so... What does 24 hours in your life look like? Um, I mean, when, when they say when they say it's a vicious cycle, it's true. Pretty much the same thing. So, yeah, we said we boost. We said we panhandle sometimes or whatever. We don't really like panhandling. It's not really our thing. It seems to be a popular thing around here. But um, so basically, yeah, we wake up, and if we don't have you know drugs or what we need, especially with the physical dependency that fentanyl has, which is a total different game. Um, we go, we boost, we'll find, some, we'll find someone who will give us a list of things to steal. We'll put ourselves out there, hope it goes well, which it, I mean, half the time. yeah, half the time it does. And um, then we 
get what we need or dope, we, we'll, we'll probably get robbed. We get robbed a lot here. I will say, like, a lot here. We'll get, like, sold fake stuff or someone will try to, like, manipulate us to turn against each other, you know, so that they can have their way with whatever. So, you know, it's just constant stress and, you know, I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss, but BS. <laughs> but um, the drugs numb that, you know. And Nathan, what happened to your nose? <laughs> uh, I, I got a sunburn, and then I didn't leave it alone. I was picking up it, and it got infected. And now it's finally barely starting to after yeah, it was, being every day. It was peeling pretty bad, and he never picks, but he wanted to, he doesn't like stuff on his face. Dead skin was grossing him out. Yeah, and I just kept covering with the sponge and stuff, and kept getting agitated. But here they don't have, I noticed, like, you know, in Huntington Beach, like, we pretty much, like, I've never been this dirty, like, but, like, usually, like, we shower at least, if not every day, like, you know, every couple of days, like, when we're in Huntington, where we usually are, but here, they don't have, they don't really provide, like, close places or, you know, to shower, and, like, if maybe there's a church somewhere, I haven't heard, I've tried asking around, but, you know, a lot of these people are dirty, so we're, we're sleeping dirty and staying dirty pretty much the whole time, like, I don't think we've showered in, like, it's been a while, like, yeah, yeah, so... Um, they should probably try to provide people who are homeless here with showers. Yeah. <laughs> and then lastly, after being homeless for the last couple of years, what's the most important lesson that you've learned? Mm. <laughs> it's a hard one. Pro probably to uh, get clean eventually get the poor guy here. Yeah. Um, yeah, like we're going to have to separate at one point to focus on ourselves. Yeah. That's the main thing. Yeah, and we, we know that. Like, we have a spiritual foundation. Uh, we both believe in God. We're both Christian. He he didn't have any religious um, preference before I met him, but um, I, I love God. And so, yeah, just, you know, to never give up and to keep on going. Like, I'll tell you, I've kicked fentanyl probably over 20 times. And... Uh, it hurts. And a lot of people don't do that, you know, and that's a, that's why a lot of people stay out here, but I, I always end up going home and, and reconnecting with my family. If you do have a good family, you know, like, just just don't give up. And, like, the, the disease of addiction, it, it, it's a rough one. It really is, but um, but I never give up. Um, if I have to, I, I know I'm going to have to kick that all soon, probably, like, next week, because I always go home. And, you know, we cry together. We hold each other in each other's arms, and then I'll go to treatment. I'll go to detox. I do whatever I have to do. You'll do it. Yeah. yeah you'll get through <laughs> it. You. Yeah. you guys can get back together and live a happy life. Yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> Are you guys okay with us posting this on our YouTube channel? Um, I'm okay with it. I mean, for sure, our faces, like, I don't know if we could get, like, five or ten bucks more. We could. I feel kind of weird about it, but, you know, I want to help you guys. I feel like, I feel like it's cool. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. No problem. Okay. Oh shit, don't put that part in there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>